Hello everyone, this is John Buck back with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. In this video I'm going to show you for finite impulse response filters how we can actually uh, implement them in MATLAB for the simple example I showed you last time where we take the ideal response, truncate it, and then shift it to make a causal FIR filter. So let's see how that works out. Again, just briefly uh, reviewing uh, what we saw last time, we ended up with this filter design procedure where we find the ideal filter impulse response starting from the frequency domain. Because again, frequency selective filters, we usually design in omega. We know what we want it to look like in omega. And we're trying to find something in time that will approximate that frequency response by the time we're done, but be causal in finite length. So then we truncate the ideal impulse response, h of n, so we'll call it h1 of n, is, is from minus l to l, it equals the ideal one, and everywhere else we just set it to zero. And then after we do that, we say, well, now that this thing is finite in length, I can shift it to make it causal. And so I shift it over by L samples, and I ended up with something that looks like this. So if we're going to do that in MATLAB, let's see how it looks. Let's hop over to the MATLAB screen. Uh, let me get the editor window up first to show you the code. So again, this oh, we're going to uh, have uh, define our filter to say we're going to the overall length is going to go from zero to forty. So it should say 41 point FIR filter with a cutoff at pi over 3. And so if we we're going to be better programmers, we would have set that up to be one third. So they say, OK, our L is half of M, and our time for the filter is going to go from 0 to M. And so now that we've done this, it's easier to make it change if we need to. As we say, we use MATLAB's built-in sync function. We say we have sync of alpha times N minus L. So again, this is going from 0 to n. This is the shift of L. So this, this part is the truncated thing. This extra alpha is a gain that we need uh, because of the way MATLAB defines the sync function. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but if, if you get that wrong, your filter will have the right edges. It'll cut off at pi over 3. But the gain uh, <clears throat> would be uh, too large. And so then we want to look at this and, and confirm our filter is working. We're going to use the, the uh, FREQZ or FREQZ command, as it's often pronounced. And this says we're going to evaluate at 2048 frequencies between 0 and pi. We put the impulse response here for an FIR filter. We just set this equal to 1. And once we do that, H will be the, the four, it takes the Fourier transform and it tells us the frequency response magnitude at these omegas between 0 and pi. And so then the plots, we're going to plot the impulse response first plot the uh, frequency response where we normalize the axis by pi. Uh, this is just one of my idiosyncrasies. I'd rather see it go from 0 to 1 so I can think of it as fractions of pi and plot the magnitude. And then we'll zoom in on the pass band and stop band to see the effect of, of zooming, uh, of, of truncating things. So if we uh, save that and run it, we get our windows popping up here. So again, here's our impulse response. Like the one, sort of like the cartoons when we drew, we can see it oscillating back and forth, getting smaller as it moves away from, from the center at the point of symmetry here, which is uh, our L would be 20, and this is where it's symmetric at 20. If I take the magnitude frequency response, I get something kind of like that cartoon I drew in the last video, right? I get a uh, frequency response here. Uh, with, it's not quite the ideal filter, it ripples around. And then it takes a little while to get down here to the stop band, where it's not identically zero. If I zoom in on the, the mag, well, I could zoom in on this two ways. One is I can use uh, the zoom tool here. I could click on the zoom tool and say I want to zoom in. Oh, that didn't work. On this region, and, and MATLAB will zoom in, and I can get a better idea what the ripple is. But I can also do that ahead of time like this to see the region and see that, that my filter is uh, Ripple has these ripples, but it's getting worse. But the ripples are still pretty much within plus or minus 0.1 in the pass band. And when I get to the stop band, again, they're largely below 0.1. So it's sort of within 10% of the ideal filter here. The trick is we say, well, what if I need better than 10%? How do I narrow things down? Well, that's, that's a challenge. Uh, and we'll see in the next class how we can, uh, instead of just truncating things, uh, by cutting them off abruptly, if we sort of make smoother transitions at the edge, we can get smaller ripples here, but it will cost, you know, spoiler alert, it will cost us and that the transition band will get wider for the, if the filter length stays the same. So to make uh, 
We can make the ripples smaller for a given filter length, but the cost of doing that will be the transition band getting wider. Oh, and I still owe you an explanation of why we need this. It's kind of uh, not obvious at first why I need this extra alpha in front. And it's the way uh, MATLAB defines the uh, sync commands. Let me get back to the, uh, the whiteboard here to show you that uh, and get a clean page. So when MATLAB defines the MATLAB command, we say like h equals sync of x, MATLAB puts uh, a pi in there. So MATLAB's sync command, because it, they, they know you're probably defining discrete time filters with it, is actually going to be pi x, sync sine of pi x over pi x. So when we put in uh, that sort of mixing math, MATLAB and math here, when we said we had sync of, we replaced the x by uh, one third n minus l, right, in MATLAB, if I put that in, if I substitute that in up here, well, the thing is, I'm the issue is I'm substituting all of that in. So I get, I replace both of the x's. I have pi times one third, which is good, times n minus l in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have pi times one third times n minus l. And this one is the problem, because the, the ideal filter I want, my cutoff frequency omega naught pi over three inside the sink. But we saw when we did the ideal filters in inverse impulse response, I just had a pi in the denominator, not this pi over 3. So whatever cutoff filter I have, whatever cutoff frequency I have, I need to multiply MATLAB's version by a third so these cancel out and leave me the thing I really want, which is sine of pi omega naught n over pi n, here with the, the delays to make, the n's have been delayed to make it causal. All right, so that's why when we make use MATLAB's built-in sync command, which is a good way to make these filters, we need that extra multiplication out front by this thing that was, uh, this was what I called alpha, is, is the, the uh, you could say alpha is equal to the cutoff frequency divided by pi is one design, uh, sort of philosophy of filter design to define it that way. Okay, so that's all for this time. That Now we've seen how do we make a basic finite impulse response filter? How do we implement it in MATLAB? Uh, next time we'll see how do we apply tapers uh, to make a, a more practical filter. Um, so not a more practical filter, but a filter with smaller ripples. And, and I'll also show you how to do that in that lab. Okay, see you next time.